Hi, I'm Reza, the lead developer of Prism's Plasticity software. Prism's Plasticity is an open source parallel 3D CPFE software package. We're developing this software in the University of Michigan at Prism Center. So in this lecture, I'll go over the scope of the software, some brief background and some concepts. There will be no software training in this session and uh, I'll start installation and training for software in the following sessions. So let's start with a brief background. Prism's Plasticity as an open source crystal plastified almond software, it has some advanced capabilities. It has both rate independent and rate dependent crystal plasticity models. It has two twinning model, one simple predominant twin reorientation PTR scheme and another advanced twin D twin model. It can be easily connected to common preprocessors Dream 3D and Napper and it's, it can be integrated with materials common. Uh, it's high performance software so it has ideal scaling for thousand processors. That's at least in the region that we tested it. It can handle multi-phase problems and it can handle effect of grain size. On the same page, it's very user friendly. It has a very simple and intuitive input file. It has a detailed online user guide for the code. It can be, the, the, the results can be processed and post-processed by Mtex and ProView, which are typical post-processing software and they're free. And there is a detailed online user guide for linking the preprocessors and post-processing uh, softwares. There are applications to get you started for this software. And the software itself is highly modular. And if you want to actually add a feature to the software, to the code, you don't have to change everything. You just need to change the part that you actually want to do the uh, new feature. And there is a, a framework there to implement different crystal plastic concept models. So there are some cases that people are willing to use the CPFE framework, but they want to implement their own crystal plasticity concept model. So this feature enabled them to just change that a specific file. So the Prism Plasticity CPFE software is implemented on top of the open source DIL2 FE solver, which is written in C++. And there are two types of Prism Plasticity users. First type, they just want to use Prism Plasticity pre-built applications. So for that, no C++ knowledge is needed, no DIL2 knowledge is needed. But if there is a group of um, users that they want to actually extend Prism Plasticity itself, they need to have some C++ knowledge and definitely some DIL2 knowledge on top of it. So let's briefly go over the Crystal Plasticity Find Element method. There are different deformation mechanisms which are inducing plasticity in crystalline metal. Sleep, twinning, phase transformation, and creep. So sleep is a result of the dislocation glide. In other words, plastic deformation due to sleep is the result of successive sliding of one layer of atoms over another one, which occurs in a specific crystallographic direction and plane, which is commonly called a sleep direction and sleep plane. These two forms a sleep system. In a case of twinning, portion of crystal takes up an orientation that is related to the orientation of the rest of the untwinned lattice in a definite symmetrical way. The twin portion of the crystal is a mirror image of the parent crystal or untwinned crystal. The plane of symmetry is called the twinning plane. So in the crystal plasticity find element method, Find element handles the equilibrium of the forces and the compatibility of the displacement, while the crystal plasticity model captures the constitutive model at each integration point. In a most simplest definition, in each iteration, the displacement field is captured by FE solver, which generates the input deformation gradient tensor for crystal plasticity model. Then the crystal plasticity model generates to updated stress and an algorithmic tangent modulus and pass it back to the FE solver to move forward for the next iteration. 
As I explained, crystal plasticity models are the heart of CPFE framework. Here is a quick view of kinematics and constitutive models. So first equation is multiplicative decomposition of deformation gradient tensor. So the finite deformation continuum mechanics framework is adopted for prism spasticity. The kinematics of single crystal sleep is illustrated here in this figure in which two independent deformation mechanisms of elastic distortion of the crystal lattice and pure shear as a result of plastic sleep accommodate the applied deformation. So the macroscopic velocity gradient tensor L can be additively decomposed into the elastic and plastic components LE and LP. So the key idea of crystal plasticity is to link the plastic part of the velocity gradient tensor as a representative of macroscopic response to the superposition of shear deformation induced by crystallographic sleep on multiple sleeps as a microscopic mechanisms of deformation and the evolution of sleep resistance for a sleep system alpha can be seen here. This is commonly known as isotropic hardening. In this equation, H alpha beta, which is commonly termed as hardening moduli, defines the variation of sleep resistance for sleep system alpha due to sleep rate on a sleep system beta. The final part of the model depends if the model is rate independent or rate dependent. These models are very similar to rate independent and rate dependent continuum plasticity models, except instead of having just one yield surface or flow rule, you'll have them for each sleep system. In the case of rate independent models, there is a yield surface for each sleep system. So tau alpha is the applied resolved shear stress, S alpha is the sleep resistance, but chi is the kinematic hardening term, which is the back stress term for that sleep system. In the case of rate dependent model, there's typically no rigid flow rule. And the shearing rate gamma dot alpha is related to the resolved shear stress tau alpha through the flow rule. And in that equation, gamma dot node is a reference shearing rate and it's a constant. The next step is integration with the experimental characterization results using the open source software Dream3D and Napper. An important feature of the Prism Spasticity CPFE software is the integration with experimental characterization schemes such as electron backscatter diffraction, EBSD, and synchrotron X-ray diffraction. Here, I will go over the procedures to generate the input files of Prism Spasticity software using available open source software packages of Dream3D and Napper. In the case of Prism Spasticity software, the material and simulation parameters are included within the input files, leaving two additional required input files, which are the orientation and the grain IDs. These two will be provided by Dream3D and Napper. The integration of prism spasticity with the EBSD data can be handled through an automatic pipeline of Dream3D, which we developed it, and it can be freely downloaded from the prism's GitHub. The pipeline basically reading the EBSD information and along the grain size and grain shape information you provided, the microstructure is generated by Dream3D pipeline. Finally, the pipeline generates the required input file for prism spasticity, which is an orientation file in Rodriguez vector space and grain ID. Alternatively, one can use the open source software Napper to link the material characterization to prism spasticity software. This is especially useful to generate the microstructure from grain by grain data obtained from the synchrotron X-ray diffraction. One should note that the prism spasticity CPFE code can handle structured and unstructured hex elements. If you have a TET mesh, you should use a TET to hex converter to convert the TET elements to hex elements. This converter is included as a utility software within the Prism Spasticity CPFE code. Additionally, Napper output orientations in the form of Euler angles, which should be converted to the Rodriguez vector. This also can be done using a MATLAB script, which can be freely downloaded as utility software within the main code through GitHub. Another integration is integration of Prism Spasticity with Materials Commons. So Materials Commons is a virtual collaboration space and repository for archiving and sharing and publishing the information and data from experiments and computations. 
An important part of Prism's framework is the integration of Prism software with Materials Commons. So you can easily upload your input files and simulation results in Materials Commons. And after you upload your data, you can share it with your colleague. Also, Materials Commons can publish data and provide DOI for you. So you can put it in your dissertation or manuscript and it's totally free. So here is the address of Prism's facility on GitHub where you can get the repository including the source code, documentation, and tutorials. Also, we have an online forum for Prism's facility that you can ask your questions here, which my colleagues and I will respond to those as soon as we can. And you can dig into the older questions and see if someone has already faced the same problem as you, and you can just see the answer there. Thank you very much for listening and viewing this video. This was a brief overview of the scope and fundamentals of Prism CPFE software. In the following videos, we'll go over the installation procedure and how you can actually start using the software, including what are the input files, how can you change them, what are the consequences, how can pre-process and post-process the data. So thank you very much for listening to this video.